Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Ranga Rao Karanam. In the last video, we talked about SOAP Web Services. And in this video, you'd start with an important concept called REST. What is REST? What is REST all about? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It is a term which is coined by Roy Fielding. If you remember, Roy Fielding is the guy who also developed HTTP protocol. The key thing about REST services is the fact that they would want to make best use of HTTP. Okay, what is HTTP? Let's take a quick overview. Let's go to Google. I'm typing www.google.in and I would want to search for what is a web service. The browser comes back with a response and I can choose one of these links and click it. And then I can choose any of the links which are present in here as well. So this is how we typically browse the web, right? This is how we browse the internet. While we were browsing, there was a lot of things which were happening in the background. This is how a simple interaction happens between the browser and any of the servers of the websites you are visiting. For example, Google. What happens is when I enter a URL in the browser, a request is being sent to the website server. And the website server responds back with a response. The important thing that we would need to talk about is what is the format of this request and response. These request and response are in a format which is defined by HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. When I type in a URL in the browser, it sends a GET request to that server. The server responds back with a HTTP response containing the HTML. So I'm sending a GET request and the server is sending back a response, a HTTP response containing the HTML. The browser looks at that response, takes the HTML and displays it on the screen. Let's say there's a form I'm filling up with a list of details and I click the submit button. In those kind of scenarios, typically we are creating a post request. HTTP defines the headers which are present in the request and the body of the request. Also, along with the response, there are headers and also the body. In addition to the request header and the request body, HTTP also defines something called request methods. You can indicate what action you are doing by using the HTTP request methods. Get, I'm trying to get the details of something. Post, I'm trying to create something. Put, I'm trying to update something. A HTTP response, on the other hand, will also include a HTTP response status code. Was it successful? Was it page not found, 404, and things like that. Roy Fielding said, why do we need to reinvent the wheel? Why don't we make use of HTTP to develop our web services as well? And that's where the concept of RESTful Web Services comes in. RESTful Web Services try to define services using the different concepts that are already present in HTTP. The most important abstraction in REST is something called a resource. A resource is anything that you would want to expose to the outside world through your application. For example, when I talk about the to-do management application, the users are a resource. Who is using it? Ranga is a resource. What are the to-dos also can be a resource. A specific to-do is a resource. A list of to-dos is also a resource. When we are talking about developing RESTful services, we are always thinking about resources. 
what are the resources in my application a to do a user a list of to do's what we do is we would assign a uri to the resource for example the uri to the resource ranga is slash user slash ranga the uri to all the to do's that ranga has is slash user ranga to do's the uri to the first resource that ranga has is you are user ranga to do slash one so what we do is we assign a uri to each resource rest does not worry about how you are representing your resource is it xml is it html is it json that does not really matter the most important thing is the fact that you define your resource and perform the actions on the resource using whatever facilities that are provided by http just like we discussed earlier if i want to create a resource i would do a post to slash users if i want to delete something do a delete to slash user slash one get slash users get slash user slash one the important thing about rest is the fact that you have to think in terms of resources what are the different resources that are present in your application that you would want to expose to other applications and the second thing is make use of http if you want to do any operations on the resource you have to use the verbs which are already specified by http get put post patch and things like that in rest we don't really have any restriction on the data exchange format while json is very popular rest does not worry whether you're using json xml or whatever format you would want to use important thing is transport is always http rest is completely built on top of http there is no standard service definition which is attached with rest that can be a drawback in some scenarios because when a client wants to consume a service it needs to understand the request format and response format so a service definition will be really useful w a d l wadl it's called web application definition language wadl is one of the formats in which you can specify your restful web services it has not become very popular another option is swagger swagger is gaining a lot of popularity and we would use swagger in this course for defining our restful services rest focuses on your resources and how do you perform actions on them making best use of http in the next video let's look at the comparison between rest and soap until then bye bye before in 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300000 learners across platforms like udemy safari online and packed we have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months the question is what do you want to learn next we are building solutions to help programmers at all levels you can learn programming with our awesome courses on java python and javascript You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.